All right, Kyle. This is probably new for most of you guys. I know I haven't seen one of these in person with this style of head shell. This is a Fender Baseman 70. Silver face. Beautiful amps. All the basement amps are special in their own way, but this one especially so because of the uh, the ventilation that was afforded to it by the factory way back in the day. Take a peek. It's what you think it is. Probably one of the coolest fenders that you'll you'll see from the decade. It has a master, yeah. Um, it doesn't have any pull features. The master volumes on these amps are not bad. They're they're incredibly transparent, provided you just roll it up to 10. It's out of the circuit. So um, this amp is cosmetically in good shape. The power tubes look a little worn. Kyle, I know you said that you had replaced the, uh, some of the preamp tubes um, some time ago. And um, I believe you were getting some noise from the old guys. But we'll see what's up now. This is initial power on um, under a current limited circuit. So let's power her up and observe. All right. There we go. Love the red jewel lamp, the lens cover. And she's warming up. Move this cabinet out the way so we have a clear shot at the 412s back here. You could hear the noise rolling on, no doubt. She is not drawing excess current. Let's give her the full Monty. There's some crispy 120. We have a little contamination in the potentiometers. With all volumes down, we're getting some power amp hum. Filter caps, perhaps. Power tubes, perhaps. Blend of both, perhaps. Um, I haven't looked around back. Is there a hum balance circuit? So let's uh, switch to a different shot, see what's up. All right, how's that for a sensual shot there? Getting the old magic back. So just looking, um, just top of mind here, cool old ST-shaped glass. These rubies are a little on the old side. Wow, they look like 90s. So intermittent, well, these are just falling right out. So, and a very microphonic. So uh, among other things, uh, certainly a tube socket cleaning and retention. Let's see, old fender tubes, wow. From, um, it looked like um, maybe 80s to 90s era tubes on some of them. All right, so let me bring your channel volume up. Channel volume's up. So. All right, so I'm gonna do this quickly. I don't want the bias pin to lose contact. I'll go ahead and power her down. So for the sake of this uh, quick initial assessment, I'm not gonna be able to move, um, move much past this phase of it until I get these tube sockets cleaned out. So that means the chassis is gonna come out. I'll address the pots, the jacks, the switches, uh, the tube sockets, the whole thing. And then we'll um, circle back for a more thorough assessment. You can see, that this transformer here is listing to the side. Let me get her moved over so you can see her. 
She is roasty and toasty. Lovely shape though. You could probably see that she's canted this way. Should be this, but she's that. Uh, very common, the, the metal used um, for the brackets, um, not the thickest gauge, and um, not too hard to reset. I mean, all it takes is a little bump during transit to get that thing going. You, you're talking about um, a lot of kinetic energy and inertia there that we're dealing with. We have a couple scraps from, let's see if I can get you down here. Got a couple scraps from, let me get you a level, from the tube chart here that have found their way off into another part of the cab. What I'll do is, since that's so brittle, um, when I remove the chassis, I'll, I'll gently clean her out and I'll see if I can do anything to help preserve what's left of it, if that's even possible. I don't know how deep you want to go with this, Kyle. Um, the plug end of your power cord is starting to separate, so that's a potential shock hazard. Um, what else can I tell you? From the outside, I can't give you much more detail until I, uh, I dig into this chassis here, so I'll give you another update shortly. Bye. All right, so when people, um, this is just a good moment just to bring this up. When, when people refer to microphonic tubes, be they um, your nine pin Novel preamp tubes or these big octals, um, you're talking about noise that is transduced through the envelope or the internals of the tube through the circuit electronically. Okay, the, it, the thing becomes a microphone, microphonics. So, listen. You hear that rattling sound? That doesn't always equate to microphonics or a noisy tube, but it often does. You shouldn't hear anything. And this tube is incredibly worn out. Incredibly worn out. You can see in a, the gray uh, plate structure, there's a flex of the material that are missing. Ideally, you would have this, um, you, you would have these mica spacers um, extend all the way to the ed from edge to edge on the inside of the, this envelope here. And what's happening is because of the shape, it's kind of rattling around. And then you have to ask yourself, is this maybe some of the heater structure or some of the other elements inside of the tube that, that have clearly lost tolerance but yeah, these needs need to go. You don't need to stay with this ST shape. The reason why it is, is in these older Fender uh, non-reverb heads, you have limited space to change the tubes. So they would install a shorter tube and that would allow you to get them in and out without much hassle. But you could stick with a full size 6L6 without any issues whatsoever. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, you do have a Humbalan circuit, super cool. Um, I, I love Humbalan circuits. These pots tend to short out in, in, in short order. Um, that doesn't appear to be the case now. Um, they're not um, specced out to the appropriate uh, wattage or heat dissipation for the task. It, this thing is handling some current. So normally you'd want like a two watt pot three watt pot to do this job um, and then some guys will just replace this with the old 100 ohm resistors to ground but i much prefer having some adjustability there just to dial it out and because the windings are never truly balanced from the factory coming out of the transformer that is a little bit of surface contamination there um, not a big deal and, and and here you can see i wish i could superimpose some grid lines uh, but you can probably see how, quite clearly, that this is canted to the port side. Um, or is it starboard? I'm facing the back, anyway. But super cool amp there, Kyle. I'm so happy you brought it over. Um, once I get her popped open, 
you know, we'll figure out how deep you want to go. Um, or if you want to maybe change the character of the normal channel or base channel. And we'll just take it from there. Bye.